Hello, my name is Cherie, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. Today we're going to be having a discussion about copyrights and the new titles that have now come into the public domain. I bet you're wondering why we're talking about this issue since this is a sewing and embroidery channel. You may not understand it now, but you will understand it in just a few minutes. I am going to be showing a few video clips and coming back in with my commentary. So without further ado, let's get into it. When the clock strikes midnight tomorrow, it won't just mean the start of a new year. It will also be when copyright protections expire on a number of well-known books, films, and musical compositions. That includes works like All Quiet on the Western Front, Peter Pan, and the Marx Brothers musical Animal Crackers. But I hate to be just very nitpicky about this, but I do want to make sure that all of you have a full understanding of what a copyright is. So I'm going to go over to the Copyright Office's main website and look up the definition just so that we have clarity. Copyright is a form of protection grounded in the U.S. Constitution and granted by law for original works of authorship fixed in a tangible medium of expression. This is a little bit vague, so let's go and see what other definitions that they have. Under the copyright law, the creator of the original expression in a work is its author. The author is also the owner of copyright unless there is a written agreement by which the author assigns the copyright to another person or entity, such as a publisher. In cases of works made for hire, the employer or commissioning party is considered to be the author. But one work that's entering the public domain on 2024 is getting a lot of attention. CBS News senior business and technology correspondent Lynn Kent has the story. It's a simple early rendition of perhaps the most recognizable cartoon character ever created. The 1928 animated short, Steamboat Willie, marked the film debut of Mickey Mouse. And Minnie, too. Now, almost a hundred years later, this landmark piece of entertainment will enter the public domain, meaning Disney will lose its right to control it, and others can use the images as they wish. If you haven't already, please do hit the like button, subscribe, and tap that notification bell to receive updates. This was set to happen years ago, until Disney, with other groups, got Congress to pass extensions. But the last of them expires at midnight on New Year's Eve. Okay, so they keep saying public domain, public domain. So let's go and take a look at the definition of public domain and see what we can gather from that. This comes directly from the Copyright Office's website. It says the public domain is not a place. A work of authorship is the public domain if it is no longer under copyright protection or if it failed to meet the requirements of copyright protection. Works in the public domain may be used freely without the permission of the former copyright owner. Okay, so that is the stipulation. Before, if you have a copyright on something, you have to get permission from the copyright owner before you can use it. If it's in the public domain, then you don't have to ask for any type of permission. And what basically is happening now is that we will be able to do to the great works of Disney what Disney did to the great works of the public domain before him. And that's how creativity is supposed to happen. So what exactly did Disney do to small business owners? In the past couple of years, Disney's legal department has really come after small business owners, especially on Etsy, for their use of copyrighted materials. And I would like to show a small clip from Katrina Creations where she explains how her shop got shut down. And I do have something to add to that. So let's go ahead and take a look at that video. And if you would like to see her full video without my commentary, then I will leave a link to that down in the description box below. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Katrina and today I'm going to tell you how my Etsy shop got permanently, permanently banned. Not temporarily suspended, not deactivated, not certain listings taken down. They shut your whole girl shop down, okay? So the interesting thing about this is that a lot of the Etsy sellers that I'm seeing here on YouTube are saying that their shops not only got shut down, but that when they try to open new shops in its place, that those shops also got shut down. So this is like a really, really serious thing because it could truly affect someone's livelihood. I'm going to skip ahead here and get to a part where I'm really interested in hearing. 
So I heard someone say, as long as you're not selling the exact replica of what, like, say for instance, Disney is selling, then you're good. So I started making, you know, everyone is out here making these custom birthday shirts with the names. Okay, well, you can't go to Disney, and I don't think you can, and get your name as many times as I went to actual Disney World. I've never seen, like, oh, let me get that with my name on it. So I'm like, but you're still using... Um, their logos, you're still using their, their, their characters. So you can't do it. So she mentioned something very interesting here because she says that she thought that as long as she wasn't making an exact replica, that it wouldn't be copyright infringement. However, what we read before about copyright is that anytime that you use the works of the author, then you have to get that author's permission in order to be able to use the work. Uh, so that would not qualify as being something that would be fair use if you were just to make alterations to a design. However, there is a loophole in the copyright law that does allow you to use the work. And I think that we should take a look at that before we continue on with the main CBS story. So I just have a small snippet to read to you from the Copyright Alliance. And I think it gives a better clarification on what can be used that is copyrighted. Fair use is codified in section 107 of the Copyright Act. The doctrine provides an affirmative defense for unauthorized uses that would otherwise amount to copyright infringement. So there is this loophole in the law that does allow you to use copyrighted information, but let's continue. Section 107 lists a handful of examples of fair use, including uses of copyrighted works for purposes such as criticism or comment. Both parody and satire use humor as a tool to convey a message, but each serves a different purpose. Parody imitates the style of a particular creator with deliberate exaggerations for comic effect. Satire uses humor to comment on the world at large, particularly in the context of politics. While both parody and satire incorporate criticism and commentary, only parody may be considered fair use. The Supreme Court explained in Campbell v. A Cuff Rose Music that parody needs to mimic an original to make its point, and so has some claim to use the creation of its victims or collective victims imagination. Whereas satire can stand on its own two feet and so require justification for the very act of borrowing. Okay, so you have some leeway when it comes to parodies on something, but you do not have any leeway if it is a satire. So a lot of people have been using copyrighted works and just making tweaks to the copyrighted work thinking that they were protected under the copyright protections however they are not as you can see right there it has to be a parody in order for it to fall under the fair use guidelines lawrence lessig is a harvard law professor and expert on copyright issues so this is a bit of a full circle moment then Absolutely. And I think Disney should celebrate that because what we know about the creativity of Walt Disney and the Disney Corporation is that they've made stories relevant to our current time. So starting on Monday, anyone has the legal right to use Mickey and Minnie Mouse in new creative works like books and films. But there's an important caveat. It has to be the Steamboat Willie versions, not the more familiar renditions of the characters that follow. That is a very difficult stipulation because not a lot of people know about the Steamboat Willie version of Mickey Mouse. What are the limitations? What are you not allowed to do? You cannot use the characters in a way that misleads consumers into thinking that Disney has produced or sponsored your product. Gen that's also a very difficult stipulation because if you are doing a birthday shirt for a four-year-old child and you use the Disney moniker to create the, that item, people know that that is not directly from Disney. However, that doesn't mean that Disney's legal department won't come after you and say, this does not look like it did not come from our company. So that is a bit of a gray area that makes me a bit nervous about using that in designs to sell. Jennifer Jenkins teaches at Duke Law School, specializing in intellectual property and the public domain. The way I think about that is the public domain is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. 
A case in point, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. He walked out of the 100-acre wood and into the public domain two years ago, when the original literary work lost its protection. And that led to this. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, a critically panned, low-budget slasher film where the beloved characters go on a murderous rampage. Blood and Honey was buzzworthy because of the shock value, because it grossed people out. But in the long run, our culture gets to decide what kinds of public domain reuses have enduring appeal. Disney is the poster child for just how valuable the public domain is. If you think about their beloved movies that we've all watched, so many of them are based on public domain works. We've got The Lion King and Frozen and The Little Mermaid and Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. I could go on. And so that makes this moment deeply symbolic and highly anticipated because Mickey Mouse is the emblem of both of those tendencies. So if people are going to be using things like Winnie the Pooh to make horror movies, then we obviously know that that is something that Disney did not create. So that would be something that would not be attacked by the legal department. However, at the same time, does that not tarnish the reputation and the image of Disney? If people are all of a sudden creating horror movies out of Winnie the Pooh of all things, Steamboat Willie is getting lots of attention, but in recent years, copyright explorations have become routine. Over the years, many other characters have entered the public domain without much fanfare, including Tarzan, Sherlock Holmes, and even Frankenstein's monster. What are some of the high-profile characters that will enter the public domain in the next few years? So we have a lot to look forward to in the next few years. We've got Donald Duck, we've got Superman, We've got Batman. We've also got movies such as The Wizard of Oz, Casablanca, Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Something leads me to believe that Batman, Superman, and The Wizard of Oz will not be going out into the public domain anytime soon. But what do you guys think? Please leave your comments down in the comment section below and I would love to hear what you think about this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing related content. Peace.